All right, welcome to our 2022 R-Pod 193. We're gonna start right in the back bumper here. So you just kind of squeeze that together and pull it on out of there. Reach into that back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Just take note of those two ears and the adapter here. That's how you'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. The hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here, just help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things that little bit cleaner for you. Then that cap just presses back into place. Right around the corner, right underneath, you got your stabilizer jack here. So what that's going to do is just going to run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce this way that you see you got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while you're out camping. Up from there in the corner, you got your power inlet. So you're just going to pop that open. You'll find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Compress those in, give it a little eighth turn, that'll lock it down. And then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it into place. Following the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug into a standard household outlet, you've got the power to do so. Right beside that, you got your cable and satellite inlets. Just a coax cable is gonna plug into there, fires up at your TV location. Ahead from that, you get your storage compartment here. So this is just blank open. I'm gonna be putting your shore cord in here once we're done. Down below that, we get your sewer system. So that cap there, you're gonna kind of press on it and then you can unturn it and get it out of there. Get it installed the wrong way. Okay. So then you see it's got the same two ears on it there that your sewer hose had. So that'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it in, giving it that turn, clicks in, and there you have it. On the right, you get a black valve. So that black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. So that's gonna be our dirtiest water. We'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank's gonna be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So we'll dump that last to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Also right there, back beside it, you got your low point drains. Purpose of those would be just to drain out the water system from the, for the unit. The reason you'd wanna do that is if you're getting ready to leave the unit for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it all out before you leave. Or if you're getting ready to winterize the unit, you can just drain all that out before putting the antifreeze through. Hot water tank here, so you get that keyway, you can line it up and it pops on open. You get all of your the control for turning it on with electricity is down in the bottom corner here. Turn that switch on, fires it up with electricity. For turning it on with propane, we've got a switch just inside of the unit. Once you get in there and turn it on that way, I will go over a reset procedure. And the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Before we ever turn it on with either source though, we just want to hit that relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out. A bit of water coming out of there is just letting you know that tank is full. It's safe to fire it up and we're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once you're done, you can just lock it back down with the keyway. And there you have it. We're making our way towards the front of the unit here. We've got your fresh water inlet up top, so your water hose will just plug into there, turn that on, and they'll fill up your fresh water tank. Below that is your city water inlet. It's the same water hose will plug into there, turn that on, just pressurizes the lines throughout the unit. And the drain for that fresh water tank is right underneath. So you get this little cap right there, threads onto that guy there, closes it off. Simple as that. storage compartments here so it is just one end it does see straight through to the other side inside of here you're going to find your water hose inside of that water hose you find your park adapter so your 30 amp cord into there 50 amp to a standard outlet a couple of manual overrides here so this kind of s-shaped one is going to be for your tongue jack up front we'll show you that in a minute and then this longer one here has got a three quarter inch end for running all of your stabilizers if you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time you have a bunch of screws right along the bottom of this panel right here you can pull that out and get access to your water pump Around front of the unit, that little red box there is your battery disconnect switch. So with that is over to the right, that's it turned on. With it pointed up, that's it disconnected. So if you're ever away from the unit, you want that disconnected. Battery itself is housed inside of this box right here. So as long as you're plugged into that short card in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. The unit is also prepped with solar panels. So it does have that all installed. So as long as you're out in the sun, that battery will also be charging. This knob right there, you loosen that off and you can push it back. You can open up that flap and you get access to your propane tank. Just turn that knob to open it up. And then in front, that little cap right there, if we pull that up, that's where your override would be going into, so you can run it up and down. Then you get the light switch up top. And then up is up, down is down. On the side of the unit, you get the other end of your storage compartments here. So inside of here, you're gonna find this entire kind of outside kitchen. So your griddle here, we'll just pull that out and we'll set it off to the side for now. Then we can grab your little table here. This guy will just pull on out and he's going to mount right by the GFI protected outlet. It's a reset for that guy just inside of the unit. So you've got power out here. The channel there, you can see it's got the little tongue in the groove. So you're going to line that tongue up on top and then making sure that you're not sitting on that GFI outlet. Bring it back as far as we can, as close to the door, and that's where that'll sit. And then we're going to grab this other frame right here. Swing out its two wings there. They just pop into place. 
and then it's got the same channel in the back of it. So we're sitting that down, bringing it close to that table there, letting it sit in place. And then you're gonna grab your griddle, and the griddle has the little wings on either side as well. You're gonna line those up with the poles and slide it in. We also get the little clip on either side just to lock it into place. And then with the hose here, so real quickly, I'll just show you, you got that valve there. So with that valve opened up, you cannot undo your quick neck, kind of an added safety. You have to close that off before you can disconnect it. So you have the same valve in the trailer back here. Pull the dust cap out of there, make sure that valve's closed off. Then you can push it back, attach our hose, open up that valve. And the other end of the hose is gonna come into the back of our griddle here. Pull it back, attach it, open up that flow. With that opened up, you're then gonna push this knob in and you're just gonna kind of rapidly turn it past light until it fires up. The reason I say rapidly do it is because you've gotta kind of, you know, continuously try that sparker while you're clearing the air out of that propane line. Once you get the propane here, she fires right up. Once we're done, push it in, turn it up to off, let it cool down. Turn off the flow of propane, disconnect it from the griddle. Turn off the flow of propane and disconnect it from the trailer. Then attach it to itself, just ensures that nothing's getting inside of there. And we'll put that dust cap back in it as well. And then storing it away, I'm pretty specific how I had it away actually, so I will go over it. So we'll just undo that, and the griddle's gonna come out of the way. The griddle pretty much goes in last. So we're gonna take this guy here, and we're gonna fold those wings back in. And then this will sit down on the bottom here. And then we can take the table, and that'll go on top of that holding in the little stand there so that that stand, which is of course the tallest part, will then sit right in kind of in there. And then the griddle can sit on top of that. And the griddle is on its own feet there. So we'll just set it down on that. And then this hose that you saw me pull out of there is for your spray port. So it's got two little ears on either side of it. We'll go into here. You can see it lines up kind of at your one and seven o'clock positions. So we'll line those up, press it in, give it an eighth turn and that locks it into place. And then you get your coiled up hose with the garden hose end. This is tapped just into your cold water system. So you're not gonna get any hot water. Once you're done, just push it in, disconnect it, fully extend it, and then just open it up. And just make sure that you drain it out and then we'll store it back away. Close it back down. So that was your GFI in your outside kitchen. Up from there, we get the vent for your inside kitchen. So of course that stove inside is propane putting off fumes. So you wanna make sure this flap here is opened up so that our fan inside can evacuate said fumes. Get your two exterior speakers out here as well. Vent for your fridge. So really just a service port, nothing back there for you to worry about. There's a pretty port there. Beside that's a black tank flush. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes causing that misread. So you're just gonna take your water hose and plug it into there. Open up the black valve and turn on the water. And that'll just flush out that tank, getting rid of any sort of debris. Up above that's the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running your furnace, you just wanna make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Then in the back of the unit, we get your spare tire here. Beside that, you get a ladder so you can get up top and check all of your seals. Then you can also see right in the center there, there's customers often to go with the rear observation camera, so that's just installed there for them. So we'll make our way inside of the units here. Your assist handle just up 90 degrees and it falls into place, and you can open up the door. The door is just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. So I'm going to point out real quick that if you have it wide open, it will contact your awning arm. So if you're going to be running your arm, you want your door at about 90 degrees, no more. Then your steps, you're going to grab that step straight back, flip that last step over, and you can step on inside. First things first, once you get in here, right on the left here, you've got your fire extinguisher, so that's standard, pull the pin, point, and shoot. Straight up from there, we get your monitor system. So in the bottom left, we get your water heater. So as we turn that switch on, you get that little light there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence has started, that light will go out. It'll try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, it's at that point that that light will come on and it'll stay on. You'll be going and using that reset button that we'd shown you then. 
So stood right here, you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame. We know that tank is good. Beside that's your water pump switch. To turn that on, turns on your water pump, drawing up your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Above that's your monitor system. So you got your battery in the bottom here. So you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, you go to a third, two thirds and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. GFR protected outlet beside it to test on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. And then you'll just notice those little dog bowls down there. So this is the pet edition unit. So you do get those. And straight up from there, you're gonna find your light switches. On the right there, you get all of your interior lights. Center right, you get the, the uh, little porch light outside. So that amber light there. Awning light is gonna do that strip below your awning. Awning itself is on the far left. Press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're gonna see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna to wanna to stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath your tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap, and there's our tube, so it's not right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna be holding some water anyways. So what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're gonna pull down on it. You can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. I feel like that angle better because it does give you more shade. You can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before we bring it back in though, we just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just that we're not running the risk of bending them. And then we can press and hold retract and the awning makes its way back in. Again, we're watching to make sure that that door is not catching it. We're also just making sure that our fabric is over top of the tube. And the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in also just so that you're not running the risk of bending your arms again. And there you go. Your slide out switch is right behind that, right beside that. So you press and hold out and your slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, we're going to hear a couple of whines from the motors and they'll just stop automatically. And just like that. And then right behind us here, we've got your entertainment area. So this 12 bolt outlet right there is for the TV itself. And then right beside it here, you've got your antenna outlet. So that's the one that's hooked up already. Turning that antenna on, you get a little button right beside it. Turns on that red light there, letting you know it's turned on. The outlet in the back is your cable and satellite outlet. It's a coax cable just in there. TV's on a travel strap as well as a mount. So you can kind of swing it around to wherever you like it. Once you're done, just making sure it folds back in tight against the wall of the unit. And you do want kind of this flush with the wall as possible. Then your couch here, you can see it's currently set up as a couch. You get your cup holder on either side. Over on this side here, you also have a power outlet as well as a USB outlet. And beside that, you're gonna see an inverter controller. So basically just your push button control there, just on and off, right? Turns on your inverter, just allows that inverter to then take 12 volt power from your battery, invert it to 12, uh, 120 volt to then power your fridge. Right. So if we get rid of these two armrests on the side, we can pick up the base of your couch and it folds on down. And then you get the travel latch on the side here. You're gonna pull that in towards the center. Then you can lay that piece down, bring the mattress down with it. And there's your bed. So that window up front there is an emergency exit, as well as basically just a regular window. So you're pulling all those tabs in towards the center, and then you can push that window out. You got a little knob on this side, same thing on the other side there. If you tighten those down, it kind of just holds the struts in place, allows the window to just hold itself open. The screen for that window is just right here. It just pulls on down, attaches with that bottom one. And if you just pull up the bottom one, there's your blind. And then of course, as you saw, you can have them disconnected and just have them individual as well. Once you're done, you can just pick up the base, push it straight back, be mindful of the TV there. Once it latches, you're good. Pick up the base of the coach, fold it back over, and then your armrests just kind of stuff in to fill in the sides there. Lines throughout the unit are just on a tension system, so they pretty much just sit wherever you leave them. And then in the slide here, you get your storage up top on both sides. Another emergency exit in the back, so those two latches will come in towards you. You'll swing with well, the window out and hop on out. The dinette table here just folds on out, super simple. So you get your travel strap there, your legs are gonna come up and they lock into place. And then you're just laying down your table. Right? Inside, outside, wherever you like it. 
This will also fold down into a bed. So same thing, just picking the base, folds on down. Okay. Once you're done, just get that strap out of the way, put that table up onto it. Undo the locks and bring the legs down and strap it back down again. A little light up here as well. Center push button turns it on. Pantry space, as well as kind of, I guess, your active Susie. Okay. And then in your kitchen, so your storage up top here, as we open that up, you're gonna find all of the leftover stuff. So your handheld stuff for your uh, rear observation camera, so that'll all just plug in into your tow vehicle or into a 12 volt outlet in the unit to operate your monitor. Above that is the binder there. So that's got all of your owner's manuals, any keys, anything like that for the unit you'll find in there. And then just the remote for your TV there. Above the sink, you get another little light, hot and cold water at the sink, of course, with the mobile head. The sink cover is just soft plastic, so nothing hot on there, please. And then beside that, you get your range vent. So you get your light here as well as that fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with your flap outside opened up, evacuating our fumes. Cover just flips on up. You're gonna grab a lighter, turn it over to light, and fires right up. Now the Bic does work. I do recommend you get yourself a longer stick lighter though. Down from there, you get your microwave, so it does have the convection feature as well, so you can cook in here. Then down below, that's your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like your smoke detector would. Smoke detector is up by the front bedroom, or the front bed. There we go. And then just your storage below the sink there as well. And for your fridge, you just get your controls right in the center there. So auto is first going to look for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. So that's where if you notice that, you know, your AC is taken away and it's automatically flipped over to gas, you could then just turn on your inverter and it'll come back to AC power. Temp controls just on the side there. So of course, as you see, cold and coldest. If you're out running, if you're out boondocking and you want it solely running on gas, you have that slider come over to the right, it'll fire up just on gas. And as it says there, if that is flashing, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up at that point off and back on to reset it. Freezer up top and fridge down below. Converter down below that, press the top and center and she pops on open. You get all of your breakers on the left side there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's gonna sit in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. And on the right side, you get all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a, yes, you will get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know which one popped, all right? Beside that, we got your central back system. So that slider there, that's where you detach a hose. I don't believe the, I'm pretty sure the units don't come with a hose. I haven't found one in here. I haven't found one in any of the other R pods we've had. Switch right there turns it on. And then also right down here, if you open that up, you can see that also turns it on. So basically what that is, it's a dust pan eliminator. You can sweep up all your dust, get it right here, open it up, and it sucks it on up for you. And as like, like I said, that's where your hose would attach. If you have that closed, open that up and you get access to the bag there. Outlet for your furnace here. So once we fire it up, you'll be able to see in the bottom left corner there, you can physically see once that flame fires up. The downside to this furnace is that it is just dumping its air right here. So if you're looking to move that air forward and back, you want to get yourself a fan of some sort. Bit of a pantry above that. And then we'll go into the bathroom here. It's the bathroom, your light switch is just up on the wall. Power outlet down below it. The toilet, as you walk, open that up, your washer's front and center. And right above my head, we get a roof vent here. So you're going to pull that knob down to unlock it, and then you can turn it to open it up. And then in the back corner, you get your buttons there. So speed one, two, three, and four. Hit it again after four, it'll come back to one and just cycle back around, hit fan off to turn it off. And then just hitting that knob again to bring it back down. Once you have it closed down tight, you just want to press that back up until it kind of clicks. And that just locks it back down again. A little bit of storage in the back here. Inside of here, you're also going to find your toilet paper dispenser. So we just don't install that simply because location is personal preference. And then in the shower, you get your hot and cold water, of course straightforward pretty well other than the addition of your shower miser here so with that knob pointed up that's going to use the shower as it normally would you know using the shower head if you have that pointed down it's going to take all of your water and it's going to recirculate it back into your fresh tank so basically say you're out camping you've only got your six gallons of hot water so you don't want to be wasting all of that water waiting for that hot water to get here right so you can have that turned around so that it's just shooting all that water back into your fresh tank to save yourself that water rather than just sending it down your drain and then your bunk area is here. I guess your thermostat too. So that bottom bar will wake it up, hit it again, it'll come into fan low. So fan low is just moving air. There's no cooling involved. Same idea on fan high, no cooling, just moving air. 
After fan high, it'll come into cool high. At that point, both the fan and the compressor will cut in and out as needed. Sorry. The high fan will stay on all the time and the compressor will cut in and out as needed. Low fan all the time, compressor in and out as needed. And once you get into auto is where it'll become an on-demand system where both the compressor and the fan will cut in and out as needed just using what's most appropriate. Temp selections with your arrows there. After cool high auto, it'll come down into heat. It'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on the furnace. With your air conditioner going, your options are basically your two louvers there. You can close them off, open them up, just kind of, you know, as the air going forward or back or both. And the furnace there, so like I said, once it fires up, you can see that flame. Once you're done with that, if you just hit that button again after you heat, it'll come down into off and then it just cycles back around. Above that, we get your solar charge controller. So basically, if you hit amperage and voltage, you can just see what you're charging at. So currently all zeros, we're not charging at all it's because we're inside. Press and hold battery type and I'll actually just set that properly. So you do have a wet style of battery, so we're just gonna leave that in wet. Otherwise, you're just not worried about your battery type unless of course you were to change your battery. Yeah. Pretty straightforward beyond that. And then up in the bunk areas here, you got your light up on the wall there, center push button. The blind again, just on the tension system. Identical down below with the light up on the wall here. And there you have it. So really, that's about it for this little guy. If you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.